Okay. A lot of experts. That's great. Um, so, Jalik, maybe we could start with, uh, you know, we talked about this six months ago, but you, you started getting involved in, in blockchain and cryptocurrency uh, in, in 2013. Um, what, what did you see then, and, and how did you um, start becoming so active? Yeah, well, I had heard about um, Bitcoin. I, I was, um, after I had left Omidyar, I was contemplating starting uh, my own venture fund, uh, been a VC since 99, seen several cycles, um, and, and saw a lot of gaps in the venture landscape. Um, one was uh, that um, you know, I, I saw devices, people, machines getting online over the next uh, five to 10 years, and a lot of those were not going to be in, in the United States or the developing world. And I felt like most VCs kind of were not very equipped to look at what was happening you know, outside of their own backyards, which is traditionally the way you know, venture was. I, I was born in Nairobi. I um, moved to the US when I was young, uh, grew up in the 80s going to, um, to India and Africa, and have kind of followed the development of these markets. Um, and also the kind of new business models that have been emerging out of mobile uh, connectivity and, and kind of uh, the leapfrogging that has happened in a lot of these markets. So that was already the vantage point I was thinking of when I was thinking about the uh, thesis around future perfect ventures. Um, and I had heard about Bitcoin, so I decided to start just going to some of these Bitcoin conferences. Um, and at the time, I mean, it was very developer-centric. There were no other venture capitalists there. There were certainly no finance people at these conferences, and they were, you know, the middle of, of nowhere in these big <laughs> hangars, um, but but I actually got to know the Bitcoin core developers um, and um, and learned a lot about the technology. Read Satoshi's white paper, which I mean I, I'm sure a lot of you have read if you've invested in Bitcoin. It's um, it's very accessible, and I started thinking, wow, this is the next leapfrogging that's going to happen. This this um, kind of concept of decentralization and peer to peer connectivity. Um, that, you know, is starting to seem so obvious now, but I'd say, you know, a lot of the VCs were still focused on, like, on-demand apps and, like, you know, Juicero, or Juicero wasn't even out then. And, and then um, I, I um, so I started just investing in some of the entrepreneurs I met at, at these early conferences, and they um, have ended up growing into some of the biggest names in, in the blockchain sector. Um, and, and um, you know, as Ether... ICO'd. I, I, you know, got to know that team. Got to know a bunch of uh, developers um, on on different protocols, and and so. The, the venture fund invests in, in infrastructure, mm -hmm. so we, we invested in uh, blockchain, which is the largest uh, crypto wallet in the world, um, uh, with I think over 20 million wallets right now. Um, uh, Everledger, which mm -hmm. has uh, built a um, an permission blockchain for the diamond industry and other uh, kind of high value assets where there's a lot of fraud um, and money laundering. So um, they've actually partnered with um, with a number of the largest, um, uh, like the Singapore Diamond Exchange, a lot of the largest um, kind of uh, entities in, in the diamond sector, um, and uh, Block Cipher, which is uh, you know built, they call themselves the AWS of okay. of, um, of uh, cryptocurrency services. Block Cipher. Block Cipher. They're out okay. on the West Coast, and that was actually the first entrepreneur I met at one of these conferences. So what did you see? Who's that entrepreneur? And it's Catherine it? Nicholson uh -huh. uh, and Matei uh, Richaud. And um, they were just uh, a, a, a team that, um, I mean, extremely strong technically, very thoughtful. They hadn't actually even started the company yet. Um, but they were very thoughtful on uh, the gaps or, or the emerging gaps in the landscape, what the needs were going to be as this developed. I think the first... Um, Thing that was necessary back then is to buy into this concept. Now, you know, all these hands are, I mean, I'd love to see who who's invested in Bitcoin in 2013. Okay, so there, there are three, four, five. Right, so it really, um, and those of you who, and, and maybe even earlier than that, right, we, we know that, um, you know, there was a run-up 2013, um, uh, there was a big crash post Mt. Gox where 90% of its value was lost. Um, and then when I, I got into it after Mt. Gox, um, 
and it went sideways for a very long time. So um, you know, right right now it's just been going up and up and up. But but those who've been in the space had to have conviction around this thesis, this idea that you know what happens to the price is not indicative necessarily of, of the potential of the technology. Uh, and that's why my first step was really investing in the infrastructure and the technology uh, behind all of this. I have 21 portfolio companies in the sector. And that's the 21 portfolio companies, they're all at uh, your current fund? Um, they're in, in the first fund, and okay. I have a second fund, um, which does a combination of the venture investing uh, plus uh, pre-ICO uh, investing, uh, and then I have another fund that does uh, more liquid crypto. And have you been surprised by the recent frenzy? Yes, yes, <laughs> I would say uh, definitely. Um, uh, again, you know, I, I wouldn't have kind of created a whole fund around this thesis of, if I didn't believe in it. Um, but the speed at which um, I'd say it, both kind of enterprise adoption and then that doesn't get as much uh, kind of uh, uh, attention from the press and, and what we read. I, I mean, I think there's just uh, a lot of pilots that are going to move to production in the next year or two. Uh, that's very exciting on, on the enterprise side. And then obviously, you know, with, with the tokens, um, I mean, I spoke at the Ethereal conference in, in May. Um, and, uh, you know, I remember commenting that, you know, the, the, I, I think the um, kind of combined market cap of, of cryptos then was um, uh, like 200 billion yeah. or, or even less than that, or maybe 100 billion. And, and then uh, it's just, you know, we're now at 800 billion or, or I, don't, I don't know, somewhere around there. We'll, we'll get so, into yeah. it. So, yeah. So it's... Um, yeah, it, 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 I'd say that the token market and, and how quickly that's mm -hmm. taken off has a surprised all of us. Um, I think there's just, you know, I'd say 95% of these tokens are not going to be around. Um, I invested through the early internet mm -hmm. days, yeah. and, and so it's, it's not dissimilar to what we saw in 99, you know, to 01, uh, or, or even 98 to 01 in, in terms of the um, kind of this, then it was a rush to IPO, and, and now it's like the rush to ICO, not, it's human nature. And do you think there's going to be a lot of um, um, busts like the mm -hmm. dot-com? Yeah. yeah, absolutely, and we're, we're already starting to see that. I mean, we, we were operating in a completely unregulated market. We've started to see regulation uh, happen. Um, and, and, you know, the jurisdictions that were the most open to it have clamped down the most. And, and you know, interestingly enough, the U.S. and the SEC has been, you know, very kind of... Um, deliberate and open-minded about about this and, and a lot of other jurisdictions around the world are looking um, to to what the US does and do you think that that's the right approach by the US and SEC mm -hmm. yeah I mean look I, I believe in weeding out bad actors um, it, it's absolutely essential to to create an environment where innovation can truly flourish for the longer term um, we we need to protect smaller investors. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, um, you know, if you just look at what's going on with CNBC, you know, tell, <laughs> like pumping a different coin <laughs> every other week. I mean, it's a little scary. Um, and um, and 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 so I, I you know, I, I I think you know most investors in this space don't have access to information or a competitive landscape. I mean, a lot of investors in the space don't. Right? It, it's moving so quickly. So I would say, unless you're focused on it twenty four seven. Uh, it's it's very hard, especially when you start getting to some of the uh, smaller cap coins, to to really what, know what's going on behind the scenes. So, um, you know, that being said, I welcome you know the democratization, uh, and 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 I believe we're moved we're moving towards uh, a world that's more tokenized. I, I mean, this the whole reason I got so excited about all of this was. Um, you know, allowing more people access mm -hmm. to uh, uh, financial services, to to um, w without without having you know money being taken out uh, yeah. in in the form of fees, and and we're now able to do that from a technical standpoint. Mm -hmm. So um, so it's, it's it's so I I'm all for what it means for the longer term, but I, I do think there's just a lot of fraud right now mm -hmm. uh, that's happening in in the token market, and, and so I think some regulation is necessary. Okay. 
You mentioned that a lot of investors don't have uh, the right resources. What are some resources um, that we can, you know, what are some three examples that places that we should go to for credible, reliable information? Um, I, I think it's hard to be, you know, uh, I mean, I know we're going to hear from, from Coindesk, <laughs> so I'll, I'll give a shout out to Coindesk. Um, I, you know, they, they've certainly been in the space for a long time, um, uh, and, and, you know, ha, ha, I, there, there's a lot of newer media that really doesn't understand the, you know, the technology, and, and uh, they're just so focused on, on market caps, and, you know, we don't know how to value it this yet, and, and we don't know what the regulation's going you to be. You don't know how to value it? Oh, we don't know how to value these, these tokens, and anybody says that they know how to do that is, is you know, I'd like to challenge them to, <laughs> to uh, you know, and if anybody here does or has any ideas, like, come, come uh, talk to me after. I mean, I, I'm, I'm working on different valuation models, but I think it's all, a lot of this is to be determined. So um, we have a lot of smart people thinking about it. Um, I um, and and I, you know, I think they're just. Um, I mean, Vinny Lingam is is uh, an entrepreneur that I've invested in. Uh, in Civic, actually, before they did their ICO, I was an equity investor two two three years ago. Um, you know, I think he is is a really strong thinker around this. He has a blog. Um, he's not always right. You know, he likes to predict the price of, of coins and stuff. But I'm saying, if you want to, I mean, he really he's out in the valley. He's he has a good sense of what's happening out mm-hmm. there. Um, and um, and 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 so I, I think it's just there are a number of crypto funds that have uh, emerged that have some you know good thinking uh, behind them. And but I'd say rather than one source, it's really, you know, what's so exciting about this space is like you can actually form your own opinion about it, right? Like it's it's because nobody has this all figured out yet. And and that's why I've been I mean for three four years now I've been encouraging um, you know everyone I talk to to get into space. They weren't listening for a really long time, but <laughs> but, <laughs> but but because um, you know the more smart people thinking about it the more I mean this is like the internet in 1994 and and, can you, and can you expl- can you expand upon that a little yeah. bit more? I, I hear that headline but yeah, I, I think I was one of the first to say that. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, the reason I, I look at so if you look, I mean, we, we had a commercial internet that was out there, just like we have um, the blockchain uh, in, in the form of cryptocurrency, especially out there. Um, Bitcoin, if you look at even like Bitcoin blockchain, it's very clunky, right? Um, it, it's highly secure. But uh, con- confirmation times of transactions uh, used to be seven to ten minutes. So yeah. It's probably higher now, um, and 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 so it's not kind of being used for microtransactions. A lot of um, kind of potential use cases now. Um, we have the Lightning Network that's evolving now. Uh, Elizabeth Stark is a good friend of mine, uh, who's who's the founder of Lightning, and. Um, uh, so I view that as broadband versus you know okay. dial up and and so and and it's not just that one case we're seeing so much infrastructure development we're seeing competitors to ethereum you know start to emerge and we'll start to see you know which ones um, really kind of can can stick around and build out their technology so um, just like Amazon started in nineteen ninety five and you know all these other companies emerged after that um, we're going to you know, we have some companies right now that have emerged that are going to be around for a while, but we'll see in the next five years even more start to emerge on, on the um, application as well as infrastructure layers. And so you said this is like 94 and Amazon was started in 95. Mm-hmm. So there's plenty of optimism out there yeah. for new companies. Yeah, that, I mean, you know, I get that we haven't yeah, missed yeah, the Yeah, I mean, I get asked all the time, is it too late? And yeah. I think that it's, you know, I mean, we're just getting started. Um, and if all you're interested in is making a lot of money off of Bitcoin, okay, well, I can't tell you it's going to have another run up, uh, you know, within one year the way we had over the last year or Ether, right? Um, so, uh, so yeah, if that's all you're interested in, I mean, I do think there are going to be other t- uh, coins, and you know, I'm investing in, in some at in, in, the pre-sale level that I think have the same potential as some of these. But, um, but in terms of just opportunity and, and starting businesses or getting engaged in the sector, we're just in the in the way way beginning of all of this. And. <laughs> 
So then do you see like Amazon coming out with coins and Facebook coming out with coins? And do you think that that's a way that people at major companies could um, start to push the technology forward? Well, uh, I, I, I think it makes sense for a lot of them to do that. Um, I, I think one of the um, elements that a lot of these tokens that have come to market have, have kind of um, underestimated how hard it is to build out um, networks and, uh, and, and sticky networks, right? Okay. Um, uh, Mindshare is, 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 I mean, everyone is so distracted all the time. So getting that Mindshare where a token can be of a lot of value yeah. is not the easiest thing in the world. And so companies like Facebook already have that in place. Now the question is, um, you know, I mean, uh, Mark Zuckerberg finally came around and said, you know, he's starting in 2018, he's going to start thinking about crypto. Um, but um, crypto is kind of the anti-Facebook, <laughs> anti, right? Yeah. Right. I mean, hey, I got off of Facebook uh, about nine months ago because I was so badly hacked there, and you couldn't decouple Messenger. Someone got into my Messenger, and I had two-factor authentication. You know, I'd set up every... Somehow somebody still got in, and they got into my uh, Messenger, and they started sending out messages. I, I called my friends at Facebook. I said, I need to, you know, disable Messenger. Well, you can't do that. If you're on Facebook, you have to you have to be on Messenger. So I deleted my account. Hmm. Um, you know, that, I think that's going to be a thing of the past when um, when the companies are are telling you, dictating how you use their service and and what they do with your data. Um, that is the potential yeah. of, of blockchain technology and decentralization. So yes, they may you know they may come up with a token that you can like trade with other users or advertisers or you know. But I think there are going to be a slew of companies that emerge that are decentralized at the core of what they do and 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 believe in it. I you know I think for Facebook to all of a sudden turn decent, it's going to turn their whole business model um, uh, around. And, and uh, you know, if, I mean, look, he's, he's, been, he's done a lot, and, and so I wouldn't put anything past him, but it would, it would take, a, like, a major kind of change of culture there. And are you investing at Future Perfect Ventures? What types of companies are you investing in um, there? Well, so it, it's um, it, 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 we're so we're investing equity in um, in startups, seed stage. Uh, we do some Series A uh, uh, companies that have this decentralization okay. thesis at their core. Um, a, a large percentage of the first fund was blockchain related. I mean, I, I wrote actually a piece on CoinDesk uh, that was published a few days ago, but very interested, especially in this next fund at the intersection of IoT. Uh, AI and, and blockchain. I mean, that was kind of part of the thesis from the beginning, but now I'm starting to see more of a convergence of all this. Um, you know, as you start to see... Of those... Of yeah, those as course. sensors are, are collecting more data, they need to be analyzed. You know, all that data needs to be analyzed better. And, and, um, and the, the most um, optimal way that machines commu will communicate with each other are, are a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, way instead of, you know, going back up to a central server, having analysis done at the central server, and then moving back down to, you know, another mm -hmm. node on the network. So... Um, so, so that, and, and I, in, in terms of verticals, I think financial services is, is very interesting. Healthcare is, is one that um, I think is going to be huge over the next few years. Yeah. And, and then on, on the token side, it's, it's kind of set, like looking at new protocols that can enable tokenization of different types of assets and, and kind of getting into more vertical specific applications. And would you say you're investing more into the technology as opposed to the people? Um, you know, you hear a lot of st um, investors say, we really like the team, and we think they'll figure that out. Yeah. Do you think it's a little bit different in your, in, within your fund in the space? Well, I, I, like, I think the team is, is paramount. Uh, you know, most investors say that, and I, I believe very strongly, um, especially having started investing in the space a while ago, um, you know, people 
uh, again, this reminds me of the early internet days. I mean, people were very anarchist and uh, very kind of not conventional. I'd say that's why a lot of VCs stayed away from it for, for a long time. <laughs> and um, I mean, to me, those are, you know, a lot of those are the people that are going to really change things in the world, but you also have to be careful on, you know, we, you have to be aligned in terms of values and, and the fact that, you know, once you take money from a VC, you're kind of a team moving things forward. Um, and, and so I, I'd say character, integrity, uh, ideas, uh, the ability to, like, uh, to weather through downturns um, uh, is, is so important, um, and, and also having some flexibility. Okay. And then you wrote that we're on the cusp of more wide, uh, widespread ac acceptance of, of currencies. Mm -hmm. what, what needs to happen um, for that to happen? Well, I, I think we've all gotten very excited about the applications now. I mean, I spent four years trying to convince people of the applications, and now I think you know a lot. Most people buy into the applications. Okay. Have to remember, the technology still needs to be built out. You know, there, I, I mentioned um, you know with with the Bitcoin blockchain, uh, there's a lot of infrastructure build out that's happening. Same thing with uh, Ethereum, uh, same thing with all these protocols. So you talk to any entrepreneurs who are building these out, they say, you know, let, let's, like let's take a step back and realize some of this is really hard work. We, you know, we're definitely gonna get there, but it's not going to happen overnight. So I think continuing, um, to, I think understanding that is important. So the speculation in, in, the, um, you know, in, in the token markets it, it should be really separate from you know, understanding what's actually happening on the build out. Great. All right, we're gonna move to the fire round. Um, what's your favorite business book? Oh, I didn't know this was coming. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't read business books. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I like uh, historical fiction, um, okay. and I find that um, it, I, I like to form independent points of view, and it's sometimes hard to do that if you're just reading about what's been done before. Mm -hmm. So um, Land of a Thousand Hills is, is one of my okay. favorite books. It's about a woman um, uh, who opened up an orphanage in, in Rwanda post-genocide. All right. Um, and favorite podcast? Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I don't listen to podcasts. <laughs> I'm an unconventional guest. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, I, I, yeah, I, I also, when I have time on the subway or stuff, I will meditate and like chill instead okay. of constantly uh, listen. I, I listen to people all day long. I, I, need, <laughs> I, need, I need some silent time. <laughs> Beyond meditation, is there another productivity hack um, that you'd like to follow? Um, uh, I and now just check emails a, a few times a day. You know, I was um, really, you know, especially in, in the sector, but I'd say just in general, you know, you're just expected to always be on all the time and. Um, and, and so I just um, you know, decided that there were going to be three times a day, unless, of course, I'm working on something that's um, time sensitive. Um, and and you know, most people know that they can text me if something's an emergency, but um, it's really allowed me to have these spaces of time where I can think and respond and do you know, some of the, like, um, the, the non-interrupted work I need to do. Okay. Yeah. And uh, best career advice? Oh gosh! Um, say believe in yourself and your ideas, and um, you know don't worry too much about what other people say. Because <laughs> I say almost everything I've done in my career, if I'd listened to other people, I never would have done, uh, including getting engaged in this space and starting a fund in, in this sector, or even just starting a fund on my own. Um, you know, it's like all all these things that people say you shouldn't do. I got into the you know I started an internet company. I left. Banking, a uh, very cushy expat package in London in 1997 to start an internet company. Uh, people thought I was crazy. Um, you know, I've turned down Goldman three times in my career. <laughs> people thought I was crazy <laughs> to do that. So, um, I, you know, I, I just think um, it, it's, it's, uh, it's so important to just follow your gut and, and believe in, in yourself and your ideas. And uh, what's your latest obsession? My latest obsession. Um, 
<laughs> my, I, I have like all the <laughs> I have new <laughs> obsessions all the time. Um, my latest obsession. Um, Like going back to like um, painting. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I used to paint a lot when I was uh, younger, and I spent some time over the break doing that. I, I hate to call it an obsession because we'll see how long it lasts, <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, it, I find it yeah. you know, nice to, to, to like kind of create something that's um, very analog. Fantastic. Great, we're going to open up to the audience um, for two questions. Sure. Yeah, I think he was the first hand up. Yeah. 